Hello Star Wars and Unboxing fans, welcome to another episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host Darth Tuba. Today we're taking a break from the new Solo merchandise that we have online for uh, unboxing and we're going to go back and revisit some old Disney Star Wars character mashups. Uh, we've already done a few of these unboxings and they've just been a lot of fun. Um, I'm also trying to figure out, <clears throat> once we get them all unboxed, a good, a good way to display. So something else that might come on, on our fewer future episodes from time to time will be a, uh, a way to display different options for displaying, uh, particularly when you're in limited with room. So that's something I'm kind of, and, but, and when I say it's coming down the pike, it's because I still have to figure out how to actually do that. And you can see behind me, I've got a few, uh, a few items that are uh, definitely taking up space. And I've noticed that a lot of uh, YouTube channels, you know, run bookshelves or shelving in the back and there's just a lot of space to put random things. And that's something that I'm looking into. The problem with shelving though, is that shelving is all one size. You know, you can only get it to be certain things. So, you, you know, figures take up only this much room. There are ways to put very small shelves together, but at the same time, you just try to try to be creative with how you do it. So we're gonna come up, we're gonna look and try to, in the future, hopefully, uh, nothing's etched in stone until it happens, but we're gonna try in a future episode to do that. But let's talk about what we have here. This, I believe, is what they call Series 2. Now, interestingly enough, on the Series 2, they are no longer year... Oh, yes, they are. Uh, these are from 2008, so we're talking about a 10-year-old figure. But who do we have? We have Donald Duck as Darth Maul, which there's been a few Donald, Darth Maul and Donald Duck uh, uh, figures released. There's Stitch as Yoda. There is Mickey Mouse as Anakin Skywalker. There is... Minnie Mouse as Queen Amidala, and their last but not least, my personal favorite, Goofy as Jar Jar Binks. Now, I think, I, I, I unboxed recently a Goofy as Darth Vader, which, while interesting, uh, I think this is definitely a more akin to what we'd be used to when it comes to Jar Jar and uh, Goofy, since they're so similar. So, why don't we stack these over here? And we start, I'm going to start with Goofy, just because, you know, I'm a big Goofy fan. And and no, and I've mentioned it before, I'm not a Jar Jar hater. In fact, I don't understand the big deal. I just think that Jar Jar is uh, a silly character. I don't really feel that he deserves the hate. I certainly don't believe Ahmed Best, who played Jar Jar, deserves any ridicule. Um, I think everyone needs to just lighten up and move on. Okay, I think uh, Jar Jar is definitely something that is just something that was meant to appeal as a quick comedy relief for children because Star Wars are children's movies in a lot of ways and that's it. That's how I feel. I'm done. I don't hate him. Do I think he's like an epic character? No, not at all. But I've been around for when C-3PO was annoying to people and when, when New Hope came out. So, you know, that's weird about the Goofy Jar Jar is the way the arm works. It's kind of like it just swivels. It's like it's like he's trying to throw a pitching arm. I'm not sure, so I'm not exactly sure what that's that's about. But in any case, we'll leave it alone. Let's see if he can stand. He stands. Now these figures um, are, you know, I would say three point articulation or four point. That they, they don't the legs themselves in this case don't bend. The hip swivels, the arms move, and the head swivels. So there you go. I feel like he needs to have a drink in his hand or something. I'm not sure. But there is, I mean, where you can see him, there is Goofy. Next up we have, uh, in total oppositeness when it comes to, you know, the simple fool versus the evil villain, we have Donald Duck. I love how they make Donald Duck Darth Maul. I think that, that that's such a reflection of Donald's personality. And if you think about Donald, you'll, you'll agree. I mean, he's... He gets into that, just into that, like, <laughs> kind of thing where he's ready to, you know, take out wh whoever, you know. Um, now, this is kind of nice because it kind of sets up where the light, the double-bladed lightsaber kind of fits fairly, fairly well in his hand. There's a little bit of posability to it. Again, his, his hips swiv swivel and his head swivels and his arms kind of go either way. So you can do a little bit with that. But his legs are, are firm. So that's... I guess the four points of articulation, so that's cool. Um, I like what they did with him. I like what they did with the the uh, horns coming out of his head, and I'm just a lot of fun. I, I enjoy these. I, I hope that they at some point bring them back. I would love to see some of the Force Awakens, Rogue One, Last Jedi, Solo characters. 
kind of reincarnated as Disney characters. But I, I get the feeling that that's probably not going to happen. I think that there's something about character integrity that I think a lot of people were, were feeling that when Disney had, um, had a hold of the Star Wars license prior to owning Star Wars, um, they, some would argue that they kind of mistreat, mistreated it. What I mean by that is that uh, I feel that they kind of went a little crazy with it. And, and for example, uh, and we might have talked about this in earlier episodes, but you might recall when we had Star Wars weekends, which I thought Star Wars weekends were fantastic. They were like little mini Star Wars conventions every weekend in like May and June. It was a really great thing. I, so I'm so thankful that I, I got down here at least, I got down there at least once for one Star Wars weekend. It was the only time I did it. It was one time and it was really great. Um, now the thing is that this day and age, every day is Star Wars weekends down there. I mean, it's it's there's stuff going on all the time. There's the galactic fireworks. There's the launch bay. There's you meet the characters. It's it's really uh, there's the March of the First Order every day, like five times a day. There's a galaxy far, far away little mini show, you know, five, six, seven times a day. There's that whole movie, the the Path of the Jedi. There's the Jedi Training Academy. There's Star Tours. It's just like all this stuff that you can do. There's even like Star Wars themed food you can get at the Backlot Express. So I think it's smart of them to have taken a break from Star Wars weekends. Wait for you know, just keep this kind of daily stuff going on until Star Wars Land opens, and then you can kind of rethink what you want to do. But, but when they had Star Wars Weekends, they used to do things, they did this thing called the Hyperspace Hoopla, which was basically a Star Wars dance-off, and they would have characters come out and do dance-offs with each other, and it was funny and unique and interesting the first time. But then when they did it year after year after year, I think people got a little tired of it, and I think people started feeling like, I mean, if it was new, if it was something new, then it was interesting. But for everybody else, it felt as though, you know, this, is, this seems kind of weird to be putting the Star Wars, have Darth Vader doing a you know, a, a very, very crazy Michael Jackson dance with the Stormtroopers. Personally, I didn't take, I couldn't care either way. I, I didn't dislike it. I thought it was funny. It was cute for a YouTube video laugh, you know. But um, when Disney bought Star Wars, they actually kind of changed their tune about it and said, okay, we have to, we have to maintain the integrity. So gone were the days of hyperspace hoopla. And also gone were the days of Mickey Mouse dressed as a Jedi and uh, goofy dressed as Darth Vader. I mean, the life-size characters that they, they, you don't see them anymore. So it's very interesting. I don't know if that's something that's going to come back, or if they're just taking a break from it. But it's something about character integrity. So, but it is nice that we have these little momentums, m m mementos, excuse me, in mementos. I can't say that right. Mementos in plastic to kind of help with this. Here's Stitch as Yoda. I think that makes a lot of sense too, since he kind of looks like Yoda when, when he's all painted green like this. So that's kind of cool. All right, comes with this again. Um, he has, and he is essentially one, two, like three points of articulation. His hips don't move. So, but again, for the, the small stature, um, it's it's perfectly fine. Okay, let's go on with uh, mini map. Um, I remember, you know, it's 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 crazy, crazy to think. That it's been 19 years, like this month, since episode one came out. I mean, to me, that's just crazy. And as I said in previous episodes, I am not a people hater. I respect if other people don't like them. I get that. You are entitled to your opinion. By all means, knock yourself out with your opinion. Um, please don't fill my comment boxes with um, hateful, hateful speech about people who like the prequels or whatever. I don't think that's. That's not where my that's not what my my channel's for. It'll be deleted. But um, I really feel that while yes, I don't feel it's the strongest story in comparison to A New Hope or Empire Strikes Back. I do feel that it was um, a great story to tell. I'd rather have the story than not. And I liked the characters that were in it. I loved Queen Amidala. I thought that was a unique character. I loved that. In contrast to poor Carrie Fisher's Princess Leia in Episode Four, that was running around in her white princess dress for the entire show in the crash impactor anywhere. And then what happens at the end with the throne room? She gets she wears a variation on a white simple princess gown. All right. At least in the second and third movies, they gave her a couple of outfits to run around in. But Queen Amidala, like literally every scene in the new outfit. Come on, you gotta love that. Um, so that was pretty cool. But Minnie, I always think of, when I think of Queen Amidala, I think of the epitome of like classy, you know? And that's kind of, ah! 
I hope I'm not foreshadowing. Poor Minnie's arm just came out. Oh my goodness. Things that, you know, and again, the, 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 oh, there we go. Got to be careful with these because they are simply just small, you know, uh, little balls and socket kind of things. It's not even like, it's not even any kind of, of um, joints or anything. It's just basically ball and a, you know, plastic ball fitting into a plastic hole. So uh, this one seems to have one, two, three points of articulation again. The um, There's no hip movement there. So, but yay, Minnie Mouse. Queen Amidala, so cute. And save the, if you want to save Mickey Mouse, for last, we've got Mickey Mouse as Anakin Skywalker. Um, now, put these, do you, do you display these with all the other characters? No, I don't. I keep them separate, but I want to keep them together. The one thing I might display them with are the characters from Star Tours, just because I feel like they all kind of came from the same, the same location. All right, so, wow, interestingly enough, Mickey also only has three points of articulation. I do love that they, they gave him, this is the, I believe this is the, um, well, 2008, it's definitely the Revenge of the Sith um, Anakin, because I love how they make Mickey look like, with the, with the mean, you know, V eyes, where he's like, intense. Um, but they give him the glove, so this is post episode two. All right, and um, I do like that, I, and, and I like that how, in this series, we have Goofy. We have a prequel, 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 prequel character. But Yoda could argue it could be either way. And we have episode one, episode one, episode one, two, three, episode one, and episode three. So it kind of it veers around. That's cool. I'm okay with that. So again, they're great. I will figure out a way to display them prominently once I get them all opened. And um, there's a lot more. There's more than we even we haven't even I haven't even taken off my rafters that are uh, from other years. And um, there's been some. There's a couple that I'm keeping in the package. Some some uh, you know what I would like to do at some point is maybe have you know it's hard to say. I want to have like a series of like individual samples of every package. But the problem is they keep coming out with more and more. Well, this even the you know, doesn't there's, there's even get isn't going to be enough room to put an individual sample of every package. So. You know, we'll come up with some things. We'll be creative. But um, again, love that Disney did this. Um, I'm kind of hoping they bring it back, at least in some capacity. Maybe just a one-time thing. Maybe just a an exclusive for during a celebration or something of that nature. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this episode. That'll do it for this episode of Darth Tuba Star Wars Unboxing Show. Like, subscribe, share, follow. Do everything on YouTube. Leave comments. Um, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Darth Tuba, Darth Tuba Star Wars Unboxing page on Facebook, and email me at DarthTuba77 if you have any more lengthy questions you want to talk about. I do get back to everybody that I can. I try to respond to every comment. Thank you so much for watching, and may the Force be with you. Hello again, Star Wars and Unboxing fans. One quick note, this will be the only episode releasing this week. Normally I release on every Sunday and Wednesday. This one will go out on Sunday where there will not be one released on Wednesday. All right, so the next episode to drop will be the following Sunday. Just so you know, we haven't forgotten. It's gonna happen, but it's just gonna, we need to take one day because I'm gonna be away. So we'll have to take care of it later. So thank you so much for watching again. And again, may the voice be with you.